rescue. That missing yoga teacher surviving more than two weeks alone in the wilds of a Maui forest. The emotional interview from her hospital bed describing how she lost her way. The terrifying nights alone forced to sleep in the den of a wild boar. Holiday slam, 30 million Americans bracing for severe weather. More than 125 reported tornadoes crashing across the country this week. Flood waters rising, plus record breaking heat. Our team in the storm zone. Blocking the wall, the federal judge halting President Trump's plan to divert a billion dollars to pay for his border wall. Tonight, the president firing back, attacking the judge. Bomber manhunt, a package bomb sending nearly a dozen people to the hospital. Now, new surveillance images of the mass terror suspect. Taken by surprise, the chilling nighttime body cam footage. Police chasing a suspect on foot when out of nowhere, a different man starts shooting. Plus, child saved. The terrifying moment caught on camera. A man sees a two-year-old falling from a window high above, breaking that boy's fall, saving his life. From ABC News, this is ABC World News Tonight. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday. I'm Tom Yamas, and we begin tonight with an incredible story of survival. A woman missing for more than two weeks, dramatically rescued. Yoga teacher Amanda Eller somehow surviving in a Maui forest. You see her there, hoisted to safety after she was spotted in a ravine by a search team helicopter with friends on board. The 35-year-old overcome at being found, saying she stayed alive on guava and leaves. Her friends and family never gave up hope, now overcome with joy, everyone celebrating tonight. Eller sharing some details in a video shot inside of her hospital, revealing that over the long ordeal, she wanted to give up. ABC's Ariel Reshef starts us off tonight. So Alive and alert. Tonight, Amanda Eller, in her own words, speaking tearfully from her hospital bed after more than two harrowing weeks alone in the Hawaiian wilderness. As you know, the last 17 days of my life have been the toughest days of my life. And there were times of total fear and loss and uh, wanting to give up. Dramatic images of her long-awaited rescue. We found her, guys! We did it! Amanda Eller hoisted by basket into a Maui Fire Department helicopter. It did come down to life and death, and I had to choose. And I chose life. I wasn't going to take the easy way out. New photos showing the 35-year-old yoga instructor appearing gaunt and overwhelmed as she made her first phone calls following her ordeal. She was mobile the first, you know, for the first five or six, eight days. Um, I think she took a, a good fall. She did something to her ankles or knees that, that impeded her. Eller found wedged in a ravine between two waterfalls in the Kailua forest, days after she vanished from a trail. She was trying to find a way back. And just got lost. A trained physical therapist, Eller's family, saying she nursed her own injured ankles and fractured leg as time ticked by. Apparently, uh, those healing touches had had done her well, and uh, they were. They said for for what she had been through, she was in surprisingly good shape. Managing to persevere using expert survival skills. She ate a lot of guava. Um, some some of the special plants that she knows you can eat for energy. In an interview with the New York Times, claiming she took extreme measures, even spending one night in the den of a wild boar. The official search for her called off after 72 hours, but a group of volunteers dubbed Amanda's Angels persisting in their mission to find her. 5 p.m. Friday, the moment all had been hoping for. We looked down and was like, hey, there's a hiker. What? And she's like coming out of the woodwork, man. Like, arms out you know, waving us down. Unbelievable, man. Elation. Absolute elation. It's been a really significant spiritual journey that I was guided on. Unbridled emotion from Eller's mother. Oh, I was crying with tears of joy. You know, I just uh, am so incredibly grateful to have my girl home. Her safe return, a relief to her family, and an entire community. We're going to have a party. We're gonna, <laughs> I know. Yeah, we're going to have a serious party. Yeah. So great they found her. Ariel Reshef joins us now live on set. Ariel, we know when she went out on that hike, she left her wallet, her keys, and her water inside of her car. Do we know how she got lost? Well, Tom, Eller told the New York Times she was on a trail and simply lost her way, and then she fell about 20 feet, injuring herself, fighting to survive all of those days. She's now thanking the community for the massive effort it took to save her. And 
amazing she was able to make a statement it tonight. Yes. All right, Ariel, thank you. Next to the holiday slam, the relentless rounds of severe weather, 30 million Americans in the storm zone sweeping from Texas through the Great Lakes. At least 125 reported tornadoes across 11 states this week, with more expected. Those new storms bringing more heavy rain to already saturated ground in Oklahoma. And Tulsa residents warned to get ready to evacuate if high water there causes the levees to give way. All of this plus extreme holiday heat. Here's ABC senior meteorologist Rob Marciano. Tonight, the center of the country bracing for more severe weather. You can hear the hail off the roof of the car. Crazy rain out the front windshield. This is a powerful supercell and it has rotation. The region slammed by days of dangerous storms. This EF1 twister with winds up to 110 miles per hour touching down near Iowa City Friday. This is incredible. This is a multi vortex wide tornado. You can see the entire mesocyclone on this tornado rotating. And 125 reported tornadoes in 11 states since Monday. Parts of Kansas getting more than five inches of rain in the last 24 hours. A flash flood emergency in Wichita on Friday. Along the Arkansas River outside Tulsa, the Keystone Dam releasing water at more than 1.8 million gallons per second, putting pressure on the levees. They have never been tested like they will be over the next uh, four or five days. Downstream, first responders going door to door. Looking for people that might not have been able to make their way out, that might be stranded. Officials describing the flooding in Muskogee as catastrophic. I've not seen anything like this, and I've been through Hurricane Katrina, uh, Houston, and I haven't seen anything coming up this fast. Residents are anxious as more storms loom. And Rob is at the center of it all in a Texas panhandle tonight with the latest on the forecast. Rob, good evening. Good evening, Tom. As you can see, it's still raining. We've already had a tremendous amount of rain here in the Texas Panhandle. Hence, flash flood watches are posted here almost all the way to uh, Chicago. Show it to you on the radar. We've got some action tonight across parts of western PA and, uh, and tornado watch up here in through western Oklahoma. The setup remains the same. It's why it's been such a painful week for severe weather across the central part of the country. That ridge in the southeast bringing that holiday heat and almost daily rounds of us. Uh, Thunderstorms across the Northeast. Mid 90s tomorrow, Atlanta, Charleston, Charlotte, and again on Monday, probably right into the week, and looking for thunderstorms in D.C. to Indianapolis, and again here in Tornado Alley. We expect the threat for seeing severe weather during the afternoon tomorrow. Tom? All right, Rob, thank you. Now to Japan and the historic four day visit underway. President Trump and the First Lady arriving in Tokyo, trade tariffs on the table, as well as time on the links and a sumo wrestling tournament. ABC White House correspondent Tara Palmieri is traveling with the president. Tonight, President Trump arriving in Tokyo for high stakes trade talks, wasting no time, immediately pressuring Japan to remove trade barriers against American imports. I would say that Japan has had a substantial edge for many, many years, but that's okay. Maybe that's why you like us so much. As American farmers feel the pinch from the ongoing trade war with China, Trump aiming to open up the U.S. agricultural market to Japanese consumers and threatening to slap tariffs on Japanese cars if a deal can't be reached. But and the so president sounding work. optimistic. As you know, the United States and Japan are hard at work negotiating a bilateral trade agreement which will benefit both of our countries. Trump also looking to strengthen military ties with his closest ally in the region. This as nuclear talks with North Korea have broken down, with the rogue regime firing missiles into the Sea of Japan. Kim Jong-un saying he's no longer willing to negotiate on denuclearization. Here in Tokyo, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe rolling out the red carpet for Trump, where he'll golf and sit ringside at a sumo wrestling tournament, presenting the President's Cup to the winner, a trophy four and a half feet tall and 70 pounds. It's here at the Imperial Palace where President Trump will be the first state leader to meet the new emperor of Japan. With all the countries of the world, I'm the guest of honor at the biggest event that they've had in over 200 years. And Tom, tonight there are already security concerns for President Trump because of where he'll be seated during that sumo wrestling match. He'll be ringside, an event where spectators often throw objects into the ring when there's an upset. Tom? No doubt it's going to be an interesting night. All right, Tara Palmieri live from Tokyo for us. Tara, thank you. Now to the major new court order back here at home. A federal judge blocking the administration's plans to divert $1 billion from the Department of Defense to build President Trump's wall at the Mexican border. Tonight, the president is responding, attacking the judge who issued that order. Here's ABC's Stephanie Ramos.
President Trump's plans to build the wall is hitting a roadblock. A federal judge tonight temporarily halting Trump from using $1 billion in military funds to build part of the U.S.-Mexico border wall. Tonight, the president lashing out on Twitter. Another activist Obama-appointed judge has just ruled against us. This is a ruling against border security and in favor of crime, drugs, and human trafficking. And here what the president tried to do was basically completely disregard our democratic process and just take money that Congress hadn't given him to build the wall anyway. The president declared a national emergency back in February, attempting to divert money from the Pentagon to build the wall, even predicting the fight ahead. We will have a national emergency and we will then be sued. But Judge Haywood Gilliam says in his order, Congress's absolute control over federal expenditures is not a bug in our constitutional system. It is a feature of that system and an essential one. This latest order by that California judge prevents work from beginning on two wall projects spanning 51 miles. That work was actually set to start today. Tom. Stephanie, thank you. In this programming note, Martha Rod is going one-on-one -on -one with the 2020 candidate, Mayor Pete Buttigieg, for his take on the foreign policy challenges facing the U.S. tomorrow on this week. Heading overseas now in the manhunt after a terror bombing in France. Forensics team searching for clues there in the city of Lyon. At least 13 people wounded when a package bomb exploded. Police releasing new images of the suspect. ABC's Julia McFarlane with the latest on the investigation. Tonight, the urgent manhunt for this man who French police say detonated a package bomb in the historic center of Lyon. The attack taking place in broad daylight, injuring 13 people outside a bakery in France's third largest city. 11 people taken to the hospital, including a 10-year-old girl. Authorities say the suspect was caught on camera, getting to the scene at 5.25 last night, dropping off a bag, then departing minutes later. The explosive detonating within five minutes. In an update Saturday, police also revealing the homemade bomb was packed with screws, ball bearings and bolts and meant to hurt a large number of people. On conduit à la saisine de la section antiterroriste. The probe now in the hands of counterterrorism investigators. Since the Paris attacks in 2015, more than 250 people have been killed in terror attacks in France. That's a huge rise in the number of fatalities. Tonight, police say they will not let the suspect rest until he is arrested. Tom? Julia McFarlane with those new details tonight. Julia, thank you. Back here at home to the police taken by surprise during a chase inside of a Los Angeles housing complex. Police body cam recently released showing officers pursuing a suspect on foot, ending in a dramatic exchange of gunfire with a separate suspect. Here's ABC's Zachary Keish. Tonight, a volatile foot pursuit caught on camera. You can see police chasing a suspect through a neighborhood in Los Angeles when another man fires at one of the cops and hits him. The incident began with a traffic stop and escalated when the driver got out of the car. Sure, thank you. Surveillance cameras show two officers chasing the driver. Police say while that was happening, 39-year-old Curly Duff was pursuing them. Duff ran only a few feet when he abruptly looked back and simultaneously turned toward the second officer. Duff pointed a handgun at the officer and shot at him. The cop fires back, injuring Duff, but he's been hit and needs help. I'm here, bro, my leg. He shot you? As the officers wait for backup and first responders, an angry and confused crowd of residents gather at the scene. Police say it was so intense, they grabbed their wounded officer and left, abandoning the scene and possibly valuable evidence. The alleged gunman has been charged with attempted murder of a police officer. That officer is recovering at home, and the investigation continues. Tom. Zachary, thank you. And there is much more ahead on World News tonight this Saturday. The wild high-speed chase. Police trying to keep up with the driver going more than 140 miles per hour. The crash and the surprising statement the driver allegedly made when police finally caught up to him. The heart-stopping moment, a child falling from a window several stories high, saved. That man in the right place at the right time, how they're both doing tonight. And your money, why right now is the perfect time to buy a car. The price drops we found, so some SUV prices slashed by $12,000. The amazing deals when we come back. When life throws type 2 diabetes your way, why wait? Hit back now. 
Farsiga, along with diet and exercise, helps lower A1C in adults with type 2 diabetes. And when taken with Metformin XR, it may lower A1C up to 2.1 points. Do not take if allergic to Farsiga. Symptoms of